normally the complaint is that civil engineering subjects are quite mundane. There is it not? And you also are teaching. Anyone else here? You are teaching. You are teaching. What is the response of students when you teach undergraduates civil engineering? <laughs> Why do they feel like this? Syllabus is vast. But there is no harm, you know, even if you are following some tradition, traditional engineering. I am sure when, when somebody joins computer science, they must be talking about compiler design. Compiler design is nothing new, is it not? Or the natural language natural language processing, NLP. NLP is also not new, it is coming on since long. So, why civil engineering has become so mundane? What is the reason why we are unable to motivate our students to realize that civil engineering is also meaningful and impactful. Though now if you look at from last few years, I think one or two years, civil engineering again has bounced back to its uh, original position. Yeah, after civil engineering for my uh, graduation, it was in a good process, it was ranked uh, among the top I will talk to you later on, those who are student and those who are not taught as a teacher yet. So, in my opinion, uh, there is some transformation which is occurring in the whole subject as such or the profession as such. And if you read it like, what is the cause of this transformation? I think this statement tells you uh, why there is a need to redefine the role of a civil engineer and the profession as such. Here what I have written is that uh, civil engineering more to do with uh, practice of improving and maintaining the built and natural environment, alright. Why I have given emphasis on improving and maintaining the built and natural environment, there are four words which I am using. The first one is improving and the another one is maintaining, maintaining and the third one is built environment and the natural environment. What is your understanding? Today I think I am 
100 percent correct in your, as far as your name is concerned. Yes. Yes. Uh, we, uh, we need to improve it and uh, after that uh, yes, uh, we improve it but uh, we should focus that we, it should be very well maintained condition. What do you understand by natural environment? And in what way it is different than the built environment? Are they different things or they are the same thing? Most of the environment we are, I mean, uh, we come across, I mean, coming across environment by that I mean, right now we are living in a built environment is what I see, which means everything is man made. Yes, you are right. So, built environment is something which has been, which is a synthetic environment, all right. So, there is some synthesis going on which has resulted into creation of infrastructure. We talk about built space technology, all right, these days. If you go to the website of most of the western universities in the western world, you will find that they do not use the word civil engineering as such. They say school of built environment. It's a it's in fashion nowadays. All right. So, yeah, the first thing we have to understand is there's something which nature gave us, very pure, very virgin, and which has been adulterated so much that now it has become a built environment, chaos everywhere. We'll be talking about this. Now, two old, more words which I have used are uh, maintaining and the second one is improving. Why there is an emphasis on maintaining and improving? And in my opinion, this should be the domain of civil engineering. Now, one side you are doing infrastructure development, the more and more infrastructure is being created, and this infrastructure is ultimately leading to chaos. What type of chaos? Uncertainties, is it not? Fine. You create more and more multi story buildings. The basic issue is maybe sewer lines are not operational. You create more and more mega cities. The first issue is from where we are going to bring the drinking water. Clear? The more and more malls you create, what happens? The more and more issues related to parking, traffic in indiscipline, and so on. So, the question is and the job in hand to a civil engineer would be how we should be able to maintain the natural environment which used to exist here on this planet clear and maybe sometimes extra planetary also extra terrestrial. Now, geotechnical engineering somebody may ask you you are an expert of geotechnical engineering related to earth, moon, Mars or Jupiter because the environment is different. So, the practices which I am adopting on this planet in understanding the environment geometrical interaction may not be valid the moment context changes. So, context is something which is very important. In other words, the transformation in the whole profession and our role is because of the present day scenario or context. You got the point? Now, we want to maintain and we want to improve it. Why? For the future generations. So, in the first lecture somebody was talking about the sustainability issues. What is sustainability? The sustainability is nothing but how do you define sustainability? Your practices should be conducive to the generations we are going to which are going to follow. I should not be utilizing all the resources in present day. I should be leaving something for the future generations also to follow. Otherwise, what will happen? They will curse us. Uh, these guys consumed everything and what they have left for us is barren lands. Legacy, heritage. So, these are the adjectives which normally we use uh, when we talk about the utilization of resources from the nature and ultimately where it will end to. Once we are talking about maintenance, improvement of both type of environments, clear, it should be resulting into the quality of life. On one side, mankind is trying to design, you know, cars which can run at a speed of 350 kilometer per hour. 
but look at the traffic jams in the cities what is the maximum speed of the cars it depends on your luck or bad luck. So, these cars which have been designed for 250 300 km per hour cannot even move at a speed of 15 km per hour why it is a fact do you agree with this or not you do not agree. So, everybody has a will or wish to buy the best possible car in the world the question is where you are going to fly it and why not why this type of situation has come up. So, these issues you know indirectly or directly are now getting linked with our profession and hence as a civil engineer we have lot of what how, how would you define this we have lot of expectations from the society ultimately who will solve this problems of sustenance how do you survive on the planet itself when your resources are getting depleted. Now, this is a question which everybody is posing to us. So, once we have understood that these are the issues which are becoming more contemporary I think the role of a civil engineer and the expectations from this profession become quite you know well known. So, over the years what has happened is another definition has been given by ASC American Society of Civil Engineers regarding the civil engineers that we are the ones who are designers and builders of the quality of life. Now, quality of life appears to be a very political statement, but truly speaking I am sure that even in the western world the quality of life is being debated. The more and more industrialization which occurs is affecting directly or indirectly the quality of life is this ok. So, though we our job was to design and build, but that what is that we are trying to design and build not only the infrastructure truly speaking our job should have been talk about the quality of life. When you sit with your grandparents what do they say normally what is their tendency you may show them the best possible mobile which you might have procured, but still they say during our days life was much better normally. Now, this is how you feel that there is a generation gap and these people are your grandparents and we are grandkids. What is the what is that they want to convey through this statement that the quality of life is missing even if I have to cross the road outside IIT gate at 8 o'clock in the evening you know I have to be very careful I know that somebody is going to knock me down if I am not very careful or even if I am careful the chances are yes it may happen clear the sort of a fear is sort of a chaos which is really prevailing in the system. Those who are living in Hiranandani also you talk to them they will say the life is hell here they might have spent enough money to buy a flat crores of rupees, but whenever they want to come down they cannot why the traffic is so much that they cannot even enter in their own building during certain duration of the day. So, overall you know this type of situation is occurring. So, what I feel is that civil engineers should be the creators of civilized society. Now, how do you define civilized world is very important civilized society should have been the society where everything is followed or you know the discipline is in force, but unfortunately the discipline is not there even in dumping the solid waste transportation system. Some part of the city do not get water throughout the day, water has become a very big crisis, land has become a very big crisis, natural resources have become very big crisis. So, when you talk about civilized society ultimately the implication is on the environment. Why in last 5-6 years you must have noticed that in India also people are too much bothered about the environment you know the courses have been made compulsory by the supreme court and so on everybody is supposed to do a course at undergraduate level on the environmental engineering and environmental sciences. So, ultimately all these things are related to the environment the type of habits which you have and these habits are ultimately going to dictate to the type of society which you have created. 
another objective of our profession was to provide solutions to the need needs of a developing population economy. Somewhere in civil engineering and its practice this part is hidden or very pertinent sometimes. Basically we deal with the requirements of the global population. Sometimes when you get time please visit the world bank website most of these banks Asian development banks and so on and what you will observe is they have a very special focus on civil engineering profession. They try to develop the continents, they try to develop the nations is it not the whole funding is Ethiopia plan let us say for that matter, Sudan plan what is the meaning of this? They want to develop the entire nation, the continent itself alright. So this is the focus when we talk about the global population, the global population means that whatever the problems these societies are facing you should have been able to address to them. Another thing is strategic thinking, how do you define strategic thinking? In what way our profession is directly dealing with or linked with the strategic thinking? Well, this is a very you know I would say a very basic thinking, but when I say at world stage you are a strategic thinker as a civil engineer, what is the meaning of this? Why most of these wars are created? In, in last decade you must have seen so many wars being created, why? Is war good for humanity or not? That itself is a big debate, why it is good or bad? Suppose there is a situation where no war takes place, what will happen? There is a strategic thinking involved in all this. I hope you understand the word strategy or strategic that has a very different connotation. In today's world strategy is not this, in today's world I am not satisfied with my own money, with my own wealth, so what should I do? Why do you do directional drilling in the ground? It is a big subject, huge subject which geotechnologists are very much particular about. Why do you do directional drilling in the ground? Kilometers, hundreds of kilometers people are doing, why? You must have come across vertical drilling, is it not? For collecting the samples and oil wells and all. Why should I do a directional drilling? So, there are two countries sitting next to each other. I cannot access your land from the surface. So, what I will be doing? I will be doing drilling like this and I will suck out all your resources. It is a strategy. What type of strategy is this? Anyway, the ideas come from here creating underground city what Saddam Hussein did, it is a underground infrastructure multi layered what for maybe some 200, 100 top VIPs of a nation can take shelter in the case of biological war. The most important guys in the world there must be a list and in case of any emergency these guys would be taking shelter somewhere there clear. So creation of infrastructure which is catering to the requirements of strategic thoughts is also 
a very important issue. In fact, creation of dam itself is a strategic thinking. No. What for? I mean, like if you are intelligent enough, you can catch these examples which I am giving you and why. The most you know important dam in India is located at a place where both the nations are under under real terror. If something happens to this, you know it is not only the one will go, the second one will also get washed out completely. Yes. Sir, I think in some countries also they are constricting the dams to like stop the water to enter other country. This is also I think Okay, in our own country in India, this Jayalalitha and you know these guys, they are always fighting. Krishna Godavari and uh, Alamati Dam. <laughs> what for? In Parliament, most of the time, these discussions are going on. Why? What is the reason? There must be some strategy within the within the within the country itself. Why? If I stop one meter column of water and which I would not allow to enter in your territory, I will become much more rich than what you will be. Well, these are the issues you know, strategic thinking need not to be always very positive. Sometimes government of India may decide that north eastern part of the country is quite weak as far as defence is concerned, create a big military base there in the north east, fine. Why it is required? It is a strategic thinking to protect your nation against any sort of insurgency from the border. So ultimately see computer scientists cannot do anything here, electronics guys cannot really do, How, where are you going to put the sensors to sense what is happening, ultimately you have to design something so that your troops can live there, your infrastructure can be developed, civilization should be there and so on. So there are different colors of strategic thinking as such. The most recent ones, the wars which took place, Iran, Iraq war and all, Afghanistan. What was the whole idea of the American troops? And why these guys burnt their own oil? I hope you must have studied all these, you know, the, the psychology and philosophy of these wars. All this is strategic thinking. So anyway, the most interesting thing which comes to my mind is, if I want to suck the resources of the others without letting them know, you know, it is a sort of a strategic planning, create tunnels and so on. Another application of our subject is, uh, we normally talk about the growth of local economies, the job which is normally done by the contractors. What do they do? Within Bombay city, they have created so many cities, Sahara city, this city, that city, X city, Y city, is it not? Z city. What is the meaning of this? What comes to your mind? Within a Bombay city, you have created thousands of cities. What for? And what these cities have been tagged as? These are the power centers. Clear? So, you have created power centers within the same city and with the same country and these power centers are nothing but they are the most powerful guys, economy hubs there, economy flourishes there, I mean, these are the words which are being used, you agree with this or not? So when you do the profession, one of the aspects of the profession is to cater to the requirements of the local economy as well. And of course, uh, as we discussed in the previous slide, uh, the main issue is that we want to create and maintain the complex, uh, complex infrastructure uh, which is mostly pertaining to the wealth creation. So this is what actually the role of a civil engineer is. Of course, you can add lot of things over here. The entrepreneurship is coming in a big way in our subject now. I do not know whether you have given a serious thought to this or not, but entrepreneurship appears to be uh, the latest trend in the practice of civil engineering. Civil engineering is not only, not only to construct the buildings like the things, the um, maintaining and improvement uh, I am told like, you are told like here and even how can 
this knowing how to master the building is not enough for the civilians and how to maintain how to maintain those structures by using the uh, generally we use chemicals in painting uh, all the things so we should use the uh, things which oppose the reaction uh, when it comes so the, all these issues will come in the realm of environment influence you know when you say civilized society affecting the environment how much impact on the environment would be that should be tackled okay mm -hmm. sustainability so basically sustainability should be the key word okay you want to say something marin that again is one of the aspects associated with the sustainability utilizing the natural resources in a very very judicious manner like if you are if you are removing all the top, top cover of the soils or the agricultural field then to one where you are going to do agriculture is a big question so sustainability encompasses most of these issues so just for your information i think all of you are aware of how many sub branches civil engineering has any idea any guess just try to google this information i think there are more than 125 sub branches of civil engineering 125 to my knowledge and my knowledge may be totally obsolete now there are few subjects which are very broad you know which we list like and uh, which say structural engineering construction engineering urban planning transportation engineering then water resource hydraulic engineering environmental municipal engineering we talk about geodetic that is survey and remote sensing coastal engineering ocean offshore engineering and geotechnical engineering don't think that i have put geotechnical in the last is just you know because this is our subject there is no harm in keeping it in the last so this is a major subdivision of civil engineering but within these subdivisions you will find several specialty topics which are gaining lot of importance in today's world now this is something which i always like to share with people do you agree with this statement the basic issue is sanitation and water supply the concentration of arsenic being more than certain ppm in drinking water would be extremely fatal for the entire society as compared to exploding a atomic bomb is this okay so when you talk about sanitation water supply I mean, this is a very big contribution which has come from civil engineering uh, subjects and the professionals as in the in the present day society now let me talk about the recent trends uh, you must be aware of what is happening in civil engineering i am taking the liberty of uh, talking about recent trends which are more pertinent to geotechnical engineering but truly speaking as i always tell people that in today's world compartmentalization does not exist normally we say i am civil engineer and i am a geotechnical engineer i am a structural engineer Truly speaking, at this level, when you grow as a technologist, you find that there is no distinct barrier between subjects. So ultimately, the philosophy becomes one, unique. See, the first issue is uh, which I think the present-day civilization is bothered about, and you are also talking about this. Civil engineering in today's world has become more of a material science do you agree with this statement the first question is i think we were discussing about this some time back how to utilize my resources and resources are nothing but materials it could be wood it could be concrete it could be stone it could be ground water it could be soil anything now these are all materials the materials with which civil engineers play now when you want to understand a material what you have to do 
you have to characterize it, you have to understand how it behaves and how I should be utilizing these properties for the betterment of my creation, clear. There is a lot of material science which is involved into it. So this is where actually I put material science as number one, a lot of nano materials, micro materials, neo materials are being devised. Have you heard about these materials? What are new materials? Can you cite one example? Actually, a nano material based on the nano scale, it is very tiny, a tiny particle, and actually, it is based on nano TV. So, nano material has lots of strength compared to the other conventional material, and its uh, weight is very less compared to the uh, traditional material. And the recent trend, uh, uh, we can use this nano material or nano technology in civil engineering and spec. We can make a slab we instead, uh, we can use nano material instead of uh, some rod, so it will be less weight. Yeah, you are right. Any other example which comes to your mind of the nano materials, new materials? Sorry? Geo? Geo synthetic. Truly speaking, does not come into the category of nano materials. As he rightly said, the basic connotation is the size, size should be of the order of nano 10 power minus 9 or less than that. So, when we talk about tubes, different type of carbon tubes, silicon tubes and so on, fibers, now they fall into the category of nano materials, fly ash for that matter, silica fume is another important material which normally is used. Uh, for creation of infrastructure and why do you use fly ash and uh, sunospheres and uh, silica fumes in concrete? What is the basic idea of using these materials? To increase the ductility of the concrete. To increase the? Ductility of the concrete. Well, ductility I can increase by any other method also. Lightweight concrete, yes you are right, one is lightweight concrete without sacrificing the strength, clear, the same strength which I am achieving at less weights. What is the best answer possible for, sorry, very good, you are very close to the correct answer but still a bit away. What pollutants do to the concrete? If there is a continuous attack of pollutant on concrete, good, very nice. So, you are ex, you are slightly close to the correct answer as compared to him, but yeah, try again, yes. Ayash increases the strength of the concrete mm -hmm. and it is a worst, worst product. So strength my dear is a misonomer. I am interested in not strength, I am more interested in durability, durability. A system which is more durable would definitely give you the target strength. However, a system which is not durable will never give you the target strength. So, you both of you are very close to the correct answer. See, impregnation of contaminants in the concrete matrix will make system undurable. Fine, porosity increases. He was talking about chemical attack. Uh, weathering will take place, corrosion will take place. Correct. All these fumes will go and sit down inside and they will start corroding the microstructure, pore structure and all those things, very good. So, once you add these nano materials, what will happen? I have given you the answer, what will increase? The durability will increase, clear? What is durability? Durability is somehow linked with the serviceability of the material. So, these are the words normally people use in structural engineering, is it not? the serviceability you talk about, durability you talk about, we do not talk about these things in the context of soils. Did you ever come across the term, what will be the durability of the compacted structure? You are creating a big pad, the service life of the system. Most of the, most of the structures which you design are based on, you know, service life of, of the structure as such, you design it for 50 years, 70 years, 100 years, so on. So, truly speaking all this is linked with the durability. Now, the question is we never talked about the durability of the compacted 
soils. Why you are not interested in creating a very durable compacted system on which the embankments are going to stand? Your buildings are going to stand there for years together. Look at the olden old monuments. How many years are over? They are still standing. Why? And what we create today falls down within 20 years, 15 years, 5th year, next year of the construction. Why? There must be some problem. So we never bothered about you know the engineering associated with the material. We never engineered the systems in such a manner that we could get maximum out of them. Are you getting this point? So what these nanomaterials are going to do? These nanomaterials are going to create high service life in terms durability. So you are right when you talk about porosity and perfectly okay. So all these fine particles they will go and sit in the matrix of the concrete. Your fumes of contaminants cannot impregnate them and hence what happens? System becomes much more impervious, clear? If something of this sort could be done for the compacted bentonite, compacted clays and if I bury my atomic waste there, this is the best possible situation. Nothing will come out of it. It will always remain there completely isolated from the environment forever. Are you getting these ideas? Any doubts? I think I have discussed a lot of things. So most of the emphasis is on new materials, neo materials is nothing but the new materials. Now new materials could be some people talk about fly ash, some people talk about xenospheres, some people talk about zeolites, some people talk about raisins, some people talk about micro materials and so on, silica fumes, crushed glass and so on. Now the million dollar question is how would you create a synergy between the two? So soil is not such an easy material to master, you know that. The question is if I mix something into it, whether that synergy will occur or not and in case synergy does not occur, what will happen? There is no point in wasting money, energy and time in creating mix. So this has become a very big topic of research, present day geotechnical engineering, material science. Most of us are looking into the soils, rocks as a material, clear? And when you are looking into it as a material, basically you want to achieve best out of it. You want to achieve the best possible potential of the material for a given situation. Another issue is mining, mineral engineering. Until some time back, Mineral engineering used to be the domain of mining engineers, but truly speaking mining cannot be done unless you talk about the geotechnical stability of the mines. I am sure you must have come across these issues, collapse of the mine itself is a big problem, fine. Where you talk about the stability of the system, strength aspects, tensile strength of the rocks, tensile strength of the soils and so on, impregnation of the fluid you know at what seepage conditions the system will still remain stable and so on. And then mineral processing and mineral engineering itself has become a part of now geotechnical engineering. Because when you try to understand the material from the basics, the first thing is what are the basic constituents of this material. And when we talk about the basic constituents, these are nothing but the mineralogy, is this okay? So, Lot of efforts are being done in understanding the mineralogy of the soils and rocks. In our group, uh, Susha Lakshmi is working on understanding the mineralogical composition of the soils and quantification of the various phases which are present in the soil. Geohazard, I am sure you must be aware of. Can you cite some examples of geohazard? Yes. Volcanic eruption, okay. Yes. Landslides, yes. So there could be two types, majority, sorry, in broad sense, there could be man made and there could be natural. 
clear volcanoes cannot be man made I am sure these are natural processes all right. I think I will ask you this question in the previous lecture whether volcanic eruptions are uh, good for the humanity or not apart from the destruction of life and property if you look at the advantages as a geotechnical engineers you can always say that the advantages are going to be much more in creation of new land soils and so on apart from this. So, you talked about earthquakes, earthquake I think nobody talked about landslide and what else was the thing? Volcanic eruption, volcanic eruption, earthquakes and landslides, landfills, but landfills are not zero as geo hazards, totally speaking. Sorry, that is not geo hazard, truly speaking, this is consequence of something which you are dumping. Avalanche in most of the hilly terrains, the biggest problem is snow sliding down, is it not? Avalanche, tsunami, it is a geohazard, though it is induced by the waves of the ocean, but truly speaking, the damages which it causes to the land is classified as a geohazard. Cloud burst. It is becoming very very important thing is it not cloud burst. What happens because of the cloud burst? Flooding occurs. 7, 8 years back you must have heard in newspapers that most of the troops in India they were killed because of not because fighting a battle or a war they were killed because of flooding which took place due to cloud burst. You came across this news item. It happened in Shimla, Uttara, not Shimla. Okay. Fire has become a big geohazard. How to safeguard your structures against fire? Explosives, explosions. Another interesting area which is now uh, coming up in our subject is IT information technology, artificial intelligence and expert systems. Have you come across such type of things? Role of information technology, role of artificial intelligence. How many of you have done ANN during your undergraduate? Artificial neural networks, you must have used them, is it not? No, no one has used ANN. Sorry, no, no, GPS is different altogether. Genetic programming, GP, you have not done. Now, these are the tools which you know people are using to solve the problems associated with let us say instability of slopes. Completely, you know, uncertainty issues, risk and uncertainty. How to define this factor? You should have a database, you should have an expert system where you should be getting an information that if this precedence exceeds this number is going to cause a failure based on the earlier possible information. Clear? So, these issues are also become very important. People are trying to use utilize information technology, early warning systems you must have come across everywhere for early detection of leachates you were talking about, whether the landfills are leaking or not, whether the reservoirs are leaking or not, whether landslides are going to occur or not, fine or even the settlements which get induced in the foundations. So, I can always put a sensor there and I can digitize the information which I get and I can use the information technology to create a sort of a early warning system. This is another interesting development in the recent days uh, where we people are talking about bio geo interface. Two of my two masters students recently finished their masters thesis last semester and we were trying to understand that what type of interaction occurs between the bio life and soils. 
because otherwise normally what do we do we bring the soil from the laboratory put it in the oven we have totally destroyed the basic character of the geomaterial and we are doing all the test mindlessly without realizing that what we brought and what this material is are two different things completely. There is something which remains in the soil which is not very much perceptible through naked eyes and this is what is the biophase of the material microbial activity in the soil. A soil system without microbial activity is a passive system. Now this is what people have learnt in today's world. Now this is where actually we are trying to understand what type of biomechanics develops between the particles and what it does to the soil mass. In my very first lecture or the second lecture I think I was talking about failures of structures particularly slopes, landslides and so on and then I was hinting on the fact that the way you utilize the parameters which you obtain from the laboratory do not help you in sustaining the structure in the long run, why it is so? One of the answers could be there is a lot of microbial activity which is going on or which is harping in the system which might be upgrading or degrading the whole system as such. So unless you study this type of degradation or gradation it becomes very difficult to get the correct answer, this is part okay. One of my PhD scholars right now is working on biogeo interface Shashank and uh, we are trying to see the implications of bioactivity in the soils and how the overall properties get changed. This is something which is very new and this leads to the concepts of molecular mechanics in geotechnical engineering. At molecular level what type of deformations systems are undergoing has become very important to study. Well, these are the topics on which people are working in the present day context. I think we were just talking about the fire protection engineering. Most of the uh, time our foundations and the systems which are emitting heat, you know, in the geo environment uh, become very, very critical. I think I gave you one example transmission of high voltages of the electricity. You come from which city? Hyderabad. Did you find any difference in the power supply which is in Hyderabad city and in Bombay city? So in Hyderabad most of the in most of the streets and roads we find the transmission lines. It is an overhead power supply. In Bombay you will not find anywhere overhead power supply. In Bombay, yeah, that's right. everything is concealed yes. inside the ground. Why? Vehicles and Go to the western world, I do not think you will find anywhere this overhanging uh, power lines. Why? It is a hazard. So, most of the civilized societies or the societies which are slightly more advanced do not prefer transmission of electricity in an overhead manner. Clear? Everything should be concealed below the ground. It is more safe, fine. So I think now you can link it very easily. When, when we talk about concealed wires, concealed conduits which are carrying let us say refrigerants in any industry or cooling systems, what is happening? The soil is under thermodynamic state of equilibrium. So we talk about thermodynamics of soils. Have you done a course on thermodynamics in your undergraduate? You must have, is it not? Carnot cycles, heat engines, enthalpy of the system, is it not? How do you compute all these things? So ultimately, it is all the energy which is getting stored either in the soil in the form of geothermal energy or sometimes what do you do in countries like Germany and all during very cold ambience conditions, we like to tap this energy to heat up your houses, clear? These are nothing but your geothermal pumps, geothermal pumps are gaining lot of momentum in our subject nowadays. How to utilize the geothermal energy 
which is also known as sustainable energy. Energy has become a very big issue. So, a lot of geotechnical engineers, I think in the previous lecture, I gave you an example of the journal also, which is dedicated on energy issues related to the society and in geotechnical engineering. So, fire also comes in the picture how to safeguard the structures against fire, and fire basic attribute is heat. So, how to safeguard the entire thing against heat? If you cannot safeguard against heat, systems will crack, and once they crack, they say induced hydraulic conductivity in the system clear. So, all those issues will be there. Infrastructure engineering is also becoming a very important subject in geotechnical engineering creation of land have you heard about it land creation very good. So, most of the airports in the world nowadays how about Osaka airport is Kansai. All right, in Korea, in, in Singapore, in Japan, most of the places you will find that they are encroaching upon the sea because they do not have land in the country. The biggest reclamation which they have done for Airbus 380 industry is one of the largest reclamation done by mankind, you know, in Germany near Hamburg. And, uh, this is a worth seeing place. The next time when you go there, please visit Airbus industry, and it is a huge reclamation which they have done from the sea. So, this is what is known as infrastructure engineering, particularly land creation, and this is where people like Rakshit they are working on dredging and reclamation. Soils are becoming very meager to get, you do not have soil. So, the question is how I am going to reclaim land in the middle of the sea, creation of land by using artificial soil that is become a big issue. We do not have soil anywhere, a Singapore is a country which grows every day area wise clear, why they keep on doing reclamation. Hong Kong is another beautiful example. Now, Bombay is also in the same list, one of the mega Stabilization reclamation from the sea is going on right now at uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust (JNPT). This is also a very interesting topic, which is very close to the heart of uh, geotechnical engineers: restoration and preservation, or rehabilitation of monuments and old structures. Believe me, we don't have many experts in these subjects. So, if some of you want to take up as a profession, I think this would be a boon for both to you as well as to the society. You have architects, but we do not have geotechnical engineers who can take care of the restoration of monuments and rehabilitation of the monuments. Most of the structures are sinking. Any best possible example which comes to your mind where the rehabilitation of monument was done? A few years back, I will find this structure, Leaning Tower of Pisa, and this has been rehabilitated. Geotechnical engineers have done all right. This is another interesting topic which is coming up very fast in our discipline. Are you aware of these topics, or this is the first time you are hearing? You never realize that the geotechnical engineering has so much scope. So, people are talking about the cold region geomechanics. So, we are very fortunate in our country, except for some parts of the country, the rest of the climate is tropic, is it not? We have mostly tropic climate. But you go to the Leh, Ladakh, Himalayas, Upper Himalayas, Badrinath, which you are talking about, Kedarnath, Uttarakhand, where most of the troops are positioned, I mean, they are also human beings, they require the infrastructure to live, is it not? They are not living in 17th century where you ask them to live in bunkers. Who will go there? Who will join army then? Who will defend your country? It is a big question. So, these subjects are now gaining up momentum in India also. Go to the western countries, most of the countries are having very tough time because of freeze thaw, snow. 
most of the part of the snow at the top layers of the soil gets frozen during extreme winters. How to lay the foundations of structures and the uh, let us say pavements or the air strips on these type of soils and when summers come what will happen? The thaw process will start, the entire thing will melt and then you will have excessive settlements because of thaw and freezing also is equally culprit. What freezing of soil will do? It will create expansion of the soil, cracking. So, both where the problems are. Then comes the lunar mechanics, Martian soil mechanics. The days are not far away when people will have colonies on moon. Yes. So, already government of India has a plan for lunar mission. So, right now we are talking about only soil samples from you know the vicinity and we talk about the composition this and this, but truly speaking our subject is also poised to become extraterrestrial. Very soon I am sure in your professional career you will come across this situation where somebody will ask you to find out the properties of the lunar soil. Though our lab was a part of this mission of government of India, we helped them. Another interesting thing which is coming in our profession is forensic engineering, forensic examination. What is meant by forensic examination? Why a system has failed? First of all you should have made the system all right, but because of whatever reason if it fails then what do you do? You try to do post mortem analysis. So, forensic examination is nothing but the investigations which are post failure, why this has happened. Then someone will submit a report, compaction was not done properly, the settlements were excessive, all right this portion was ignored or maybe the foundations did not reach up to the hard strata, all right. Another context could be a lot of contaminants were eating up the concrete of which the pile was made up of and because of the severe contaminants the concrete got corroded completely and the bars also got corroded completely and piles became dysfunctional and hence the entire system collapsed. Are you realizing these type of situations which are coming and which may be very very valid and pertinent in the commercial complexes and the places where most of the chemicals are being produced because of spillage. So, forensic engineering is also picking up you know in present day scenario, legal problems associated with engineering profession, why something failed and then you require like advocates cannot study geotechnical engineering, it's vice versa, geotechnical engineers can put up a case in such a manner that it can be presented in a local court. So, this is where you are asked to come and give advice to the judiciary that why this system has failed, why so many people died. Every year landslides take place, a lot of people die in Bombay and most of the parts of the country. There are judicial inquiries which are set up on this and sometimes you are asked to give your opinion as a technical man, professional guy, what went wrong, okay. This is a very interesting profession. And last but not the least is the energy which I have been advocating since long. So, energy geotechnics itself is becoming a very big subject within environmental geomechanics, fine. What is your, what is your uh, I would say, what is your reaction after seeing this list? So, I have just realized that the, uh, the geotechnical profession has a lot of scope in, of research, scope for research. And practice. For safeguarding the society, anything else which comes to your mind? Yes. Okay. You want to say something? Okay. So, just to give you some glimpse of energy geomechanics. See, gone are the days when we used to say that. We do not require energy. Nowadays, our society is totally relying on 
energy any part of the world I mean again I cite many times go to Scandinavian countries, Norwegian countries, European countries, most of the parts of the America, South America what is the problem basic problem how to survive during winters no natural resources are not there now how they will survive minus 40 degree minus 30 degree for 6 months altogether go to Norway, <laughs> Russia parts of Japan and so on we are so lucky we have never bothered about these issues that is why India is supposed to be a very beautiful land our climatic conditions are so good we need not to bother about anything and that is why we did not do any research we were sleeping we were very happy that yes everything is very comfortable but now what is happening no city gets power our coal deposits are depleting we do not know how to clean the coal also to burn them and get maximum power out of it we have to buy coal from Indonesia such a small nation which supplies almost 50 percent of the requirements of the country to run your power plants and the day they say no that is it you will go back to the stone age none of your mobiles will work none of your gadgets which you have purchased will work without energy. So energy has become a very very problematic issue and very important issue in today's context. So if I am giving if I am given a chance to select the top most topic in geotechnical engineering I think this would be the energy geomechanics for the survival of the society. I am sure all of you are aware of the, the fossil fuels are getting exhausted and the, now people are talking about the nuclear energy there is a lot of debate going on between nuclear energy and the fossil energy and so on you must have heard about it no this was in parliament also sometime back during Manmohan Singh's regime and the government was about to go because of NPA treaty signing NPT you must have heard in newspapers that was a major issue clear. So the nuclear scientists also rely on the information which they get from geotechnical engineers how much fuel you are going to make take out from the ground how you are going to incinerate it what type of solid waste is going to get generated how environment is going to get polluted and so on. So there is a big debate going on whether the society should be depending upon thermal power or nuclear power both have their own consequences is this okay. Now this is where the con very complicated nature of the soil and how it behaves when we talk about the overall environment becomes a very very uh, questionable thing and lot of studies have to be done in this context. I think I gave you this idea in the first or second lecture that a three phase system which you have studied does not remain valid under most of the circumstances when we talk about let us say frozen soils clear or the soils which are contaminated with chemicals. So this is where we, we have to revisit the classical concepts of geotechnical engineering where we used to say you know three phase model and G into W equal to S into E and all those things truly speaking they become a big question mark. Now this is where the two students of mine who are working in the gas hydrates Sanyam and uh, Jeevan I think during discussion during the introduction they must have spoken out about their topics they are working on gas hydrates. So gas hydrates are nothing but the uh, future source of energy on which the mankind is relying when the hydrocarbon are getting exhausted and speculation is that they may get exhausted very fast. Another good example of energy geomechanics is carbon sequestration whatever carbon dioxide is available in the environment if I can catch it and if I can pump it into the aquifers for replenishing them you know this becomes a most sustainable situation. So recharging of the aquifers with the carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere because of industrialization would be a reverse cycle to stop the impact of these activities on the environment they do realize it is a reverse cycle. So the carbon dioxide which is getting accumulated in the atmosphere if it can be collected and pumped into the 
aquifers I can replenish them I can create more hydrocarbons and so on. You can google some of these terms and you can get more information about it. Just very quickly to show you what hydrocarbon molecules are what is gas hydrate it is a methane molecule which is entrapped in a ice matrix and these type of crystals might be sitting in the sediments. Now this is what actually uh, has to be withdrawn from the seabed and there should be some dissociation process which has to be allowed so that the methane can be retracted clear this is the whole philosophy. Government of India is spending lot of money thousands of crores are being spent on this topic right now to work on and uh, we have two projects from ONGC IOT and my students are working in this area. However, the challenges are first of all how do estimate what is the amount of you know methane hydrates which are existing in the subsurface. So, this is where the geo exploration becomes very important different type of exploration techniques uh, which are used to detect what is the thickness of the layer in which the hydrates are sitting. And once you have done that the another issue would be how easily they can come out from these formations. So, we do not talk about hydraulic conductivity at all there we are more interested in finding out how gas migrates into the sediments porous media. So, hydraulic conductivity experiments which you have done by allowing water to flow through the porous system this whole thing gets changed when we think of how gas migrates through the soil mass you got the point and to make it much more complicated there could be a situation where the water phase and the gaseous phase might be existing together and is poised to travel in the porous media from one point to another point. And to make it much more complicated there could be a situation where the entire process is happening under very high pressures and very low temperatures. So, now you imagine what I am trying to do is I am trying to do a hydraulic conductivity test in the laboratory where the temperature and pressure conditions are totally different and it is not only the fluid phase which is passing through the porous system it is also the gaseous phase which is associated with it. So, this is the future of geotechnical engineering where we talk about and I am sure you can realize now the entire theories of shear strength, compressibility, consolidation all those things have no meaning when we pose a problem like this which is much more practical is this okay. So, this is how actually people are getting too much involved into these type of things. Another issue is when you extract these type of crystals from the seabed all right there could be instability when you take out something from the ground the whole ground may sink all right subsidence are you aware of subsidence. Bangkok city is a beautiful example of subsidence of land the more and water you take out the more and more oil you take out from the ground ultimately what will happen the whole system collapses it settles. Now, this is what is known as subsidence induced because of extraction of fluids it could be water drinking water the more and more drinking water you pump out of the ground ultimately what will happen there will be a collapse of the grains and it results in the volumetric compaction. Same is the case with hydrocarbons the more and more extraction of hydrocarbons you do what will happen the whole thing will sink. Venice is a beautiful example Venice city what happened there and sometimes please type out on the net to get this information that what people are doing to uplift the entire city of Venice there is a beautiful book on Venice will rise again they are doing lot of pumping experiments you know what they are doing they are pumping in sea water into this into the boreholes which they have created all along the city to raise the level of the city otherwise the whole thing is sinking down it is a beautiful example of how subsidence occurs and what are the causes of subsidence you know in today's world this is fine. I am sure all of you are aware of what is geotechnical engineering we normally deal with geomechanics we normally deal with rock mechanics soil mechanics and under soil mechanics we deal with foundation retaining structure seepage and slopes and dams and so on. How come the component of geo environment is coming 
see geo environment is coming in the fact as a fact because this geo environment which is either natural or man made is influencing the practice of geomechanics. Why? I have written over here. Soil is supposed to be made up of environmental factors due to disintegration of rocks. Clear? So, truly speaking, the parents are rocks and siblings are rock soils. Is this okay? Normal understanding is that siblings have more chances to get contaminated, adulterated, clear, derailed in day to day life. Why? Because they are young. So, the effect of environment on the soils is much more by virtue of the fact that these materials are very young as compared to rocks and look at the matrix. The matrix of rocks is extremely compact, very mature seasoned players, they are not getting affected by whether they are playing in Eden Gardens or whether they are playing in Mohali, it does not matter to them, clear. Environmental effects are less, but the young material which is formed hardly say thousands years back, 5000 years back, 10,000 years back. It is much more susceptible to the adulterations which are existing in the environment. Now, this is a point from where I have picked up the concept of environmental geotechnology, environmental geomechanics. Is this part clear? So, this was the philosophy which we are dealing with. Last question, last class I was asking you a question what is the difference between engineering and technology? Because here we must have realized that now we are not doing engineering, we are talking about lot of technology in the recent trends which I depicted, you know. So, basically you answered most of you correctly, I have taken it from wikiansers.com. Engineering is process of putting things together, alright. Is a term applied to the profession in which a knowledge of the mathematical and natural sciences gained by study, experience and practice is applied to the efficient use of the materials and forces of the nature. So, this is simple engineering. Now, when we talk about the technology, what is technology, in what way it is different? We talk about engineering that has proven to work over and over again by virtue of more and more R and D. So, technology is always improving and it is much more advancing in nature. These are the two examples which come to my mind. What is that you find here peculiar? In one effort, the two glasses are being filled up, the same effort output is more and this is ultimate example of technology. This is correct. Why it is technology? Why not engineering? What is being depicted here? Think over it. So, it requires you know very soft artificial hands so that the kid can sleep all the time without realizing whether the hands are of real parents or artificial parents. So, this is what actually engineering and technology is the practice of engineering which is proven quite all right, but refined in such a way that becomes very conducive for the society. So, the trends which I have linked today and you know I was talking about uh, what is the trend on which we should think about is ultimately for making the society to sleep like this. So, as long as people are comfortable they are sleeping silently there is no chaos, but the moment these hands are withdrawn what happens? There will be a lot of chaos in the society. Fine. And I always say that similar ideas are required in the field of geotechnical engineering and we will try to maybe talk about some of them. Thank you.